live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Summit. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Welcome back everyone to Washington DC and theCUBE's live coverage of AWS Public Sector Summit. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside John Furrier. We are joined by Jay Carney. He is the Senior Vice President, Global Corporate Affairs, Amazon and AWS. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. So, you, you were just coming from a panel with Senator Mark Warner of Virginia where the, the topic was regulation and tech. I want to hear what, what was talked about and what, and what your thoughts were there. Sure, well, I mean, there were a lot of topics, including HQ2, which which, as you know, we're, we're locating in Northern Virginia, so Senator Warner has a very specific interest in that, and we talked about that a lot. But uh, one thing that he's involved in, he's the, uh, the vice chairman of the Senate Intelligence uh, Committee, the, the, the leading Democrat on the committee, <clears throat> and he takes these issues very seriously. So he's, he's very focused on, especially social media, but, but tech in general, and uh, you know, uh, national security concerns, as well as uh, issues around uh, deep fake news and fake news and the other and, and the like. Now a lot of that isn't isn't uh, our territory as a as a business, but uh, you know we think that uh, where tech uh, where we do fall into uh, you know scrutiny for regulation, we you know we welcome the scrutiny. We're a big company, obviously, uh, and uh, you know we're very focused on serving our customers and and part of. Uh, delivering for our customers uh, means ensuring that we we uh, work with uh, elected officials and regulators and, and pass that scrutiny well. So, you know, we uh, you know we'll see what uh, what the future brings in different spaces. Our concern uh, or our hope in general, whether it, if it's around privacy or uh, other areas uh, of tech regulation, that uh, you know uniformity is is obviously uh, preferable. Uh, to having, say, 50 state laws, whether it's uh, you know, around facial recognition technology or, or broader privacy initiatives. Uh, Senator Warner's supportive of, a, of a, federal, uh, a federal legislation, as a lot of folks are, both, both sides of the aisle. Jay, one of the things that you guys live every day at Amazon and following you guys for the past you know, nine, 10 years now for theCUBE is you're willing to be misunderstood as a company to continue the long game. Jeff Bezos talks about the long game all the time. Doesn't look at stock prices, all those, all those kind of quips. But the innovation engine has been very strong and with digital transformation now at an all time high, new value is being created in new ways that some people don't understand. So you guys are on a constant mission to educate. Here in DC, what's clear to me is this awakening of this value proposition and in some cases it's not very good, the value. Weaponizing is a word we've heard. You know, big right. tech is kind of under, under a lot of conversations, but there's a lot of good things happening. You guys create a lot of value as a company. Well, sure, and, and I, think, I think the industry at large creates a lot of value, and I think we need to uh, ensure uh, we, the, you know, the American people, American citizenry, and, you know, and, and, our behalf, and on our behalf, those elected officials who, who, who ultimately make the decisions, that as we uh, scrutinize and uh, explore regulating some of these arenas that we do it in a way that uh, you know, uh, creates public benefit, uh, that prevents uh, wherever possible you know, misuse of technology, but that continues to allow uh, the kind of innovation that's made the United States uh, you know, the, the, the center of technological innovation over the last 30 or 40 years. So uh, you know, that's, you know, that's not an easy job, but I think that, that uh, Folks in tech need to uh, uh, work with and collaborate with regulators and lawmakers to talk about how to do that because you wouldn't want, I mean a good example I think uh, is you know, technological innovation can be, is, 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 is value neutral usually, right? It's, uh, it's a, a new service or a new product that can do something. Um, it, it itself is just a product so it doesn't have uh, a conscience, it's not itself moral. Uh, so it's how you use it is really uh, what determines whether it's, it's uh, something that's good or bad. So many technologies can be used uh, for, uh, for good or for ill. We, we have a service at AWS, a facial recognition service. We're certainly not the only company that provides that service to customers. Uh, thus far, since uh, Amazon recognition has been around, uh, we've had um, reports of uh, thousands of 
uh, positive uses, just, you know, finding missing children, breaking up uh, human sex trafficking, you know, human trafficking rings, uh, uh, assisting law enforcement uh, in positive ways. Uh, we haven't heard yet any uh, cases uh, of abuse by law enforcement, but we certainly understand that that potential exists, and we, uh, we encourage uh, regulators and lawmakers to look closely at that. We've put forth publicly guidelines uh, that we uh, think would be useful uh, as they build a legislative or a regulatory Paul, framework. He was last night even was saying, he's, oh, there, you guys are very open. He wasn't hiding behind any kind of sure. story. He's like, we we're happy to talk to regulators. We want, we want to embrace those conversations. Right. He wasn't saying we want to be regulated. He didn't say that, but he was, wasn't hiding from the fact that these conversations well, I think need we're, to have. We understand uh, that the, the potential misuse of some technology is, is real, and we've seen it in other countries, for example, in ways that violate civil liberties, and uh, you know, we want to make sure that uh, in this democracy and, and uh, that, that we have a, uh, an infrastructure in place, a regulatory infrastructure that, that continues to allow uh, innovation to blossom, but uh, protects you know, the, uh, the civil liberties of, of people in the United States. So, uh, you know, that's, we're a, multi, we're, we're a global company, but you know, we're, we started off and we are an American company and we care deeply about uh, about those issues as a company. Well, and I think that that's the, really the big question is how would this regulation, regulatory process work? And you're talking about having these conversations, particularly around unintended consequences of these new technologies and services. So, so how would it work? Particularly someone like you who was in government, now on the, on the, in the private sector, at what point are these conversations taking place and how, how might it work at the innovation stage, at the creation? You know what I mean? I'm just now that we're really getting into it. Well, I mean, you know, in some cases there's, there's real progress being made. On, on privacy, for example, I mean, everyone, all of your viewers know GDPR in Europe was the uh, sort of first, you know, uh, multinational sort of uh, uh, comprehensive privacy uh, regulation and, uh, you know, that has been implemented. And in the United States, we don't have a federal law yet. California's taken steps, uh, has passed a bill, and, and, and other states are looking at it. Uh, you know, our, we think for, the, for U.S. competitiveness, uh, you know, one law is better than 50 laws. Uh, but, uh, and, and, and we think that uh, we're fully compliant with GDPR, and, and actually it was not as complicated for us to, to, to meet the requ uh, compliance requirements uh, as, it, as it might have been for other tech companies because of the nature of our business. Uh, in the European Union, um, but there are aspects of the GDPR that I think are unnecessarily bureaucratic or clunky. So there's ways to take that and then yeah, as, a, as a base and, and, uh, and improve it uh, so that uh, privacy uh, concerns are rightfully addressed, but uh, innovation you know, continues apace. Talk about uh, antitrust. We had a conversation a couple of years ago at reInvent around antitrust, and you made a comment to me, you know, we're faster, ship faster, lower, cheaper price, lower prices. How are people harmed? There's been a lot of young academics who are challenging the old antitrust mm -hmm. definition. Does digital recast itself in antitrust? This is a conversation that think tanks are starting to have now around what does that mean? for the modern era, modernizing government, including laws and regulation. Well, Your thoughts on that? So, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm, I, 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 I'm careful to, to speak authoritatively where uh, I don't know all the details, but I, you know, consumer harm is the standard, and for all the reasons that you described, you know, our mission as a company uh, is to reward the customer with more convenience, more selection, and lower prices. So, uh, you know, certainly we, we fulfill that mission. Um, and meet that, you know, don't meet that standard when it comes to, to any way you might look at that uh, competitively. But even more broadly, there's a, there's a misconception about Amazon uh, because we're a consumer facing business primarily and because we, uh, you know, are involved in a lot of different things, you know, some more successfully than others, but they were perceived as bigger than we are. And the, and the fact is retail, our, our original business, our core business, is the biggest marketplace there is and it's, uh, yeah, you know, in the United States, we're less than 4% of retail, and we're not even the biggest retailer in the United States. And, uh, you know, cloud, AWS, we're here at a public sector summit. You know, we have competition, Microsoft. We have, we have an in intense, uh, uh, high quality competition, uh, you know, and deep pocketed competition. And as you know, uh, and, and your viewers know, this, the, 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 the cloud revolution is in its early stages, and the opportunity there is enormous, uh, and we're just getting started. So there'll be plenty of winners in this space, uh, so I don't, you know, again, I don't see uh, 
you know, any way that you might look at it, uh, that. Uh, you know, that there would be competitive issues. Also, there's a perception that Amazon itself is, is singular, so that you buy from Amazon, therefore you're not buying from somebody else. But in fact, uh, you know, when we opened Marketplace, I think in 2001, so we opened the website up to other sellers. So it's gone, uh, it, what used to be 100% Amazon product and, and, and inventory for sale on Amazon.com has now, 2019, risen to over 55%, uh, not being Amazon. So uh, uh, third party sellers, small and medium sized businesses, a million of them, uh, more than a million of them in the United States, uh, sell in our store uh, and get access to all the customers we have through our store. So uh, that business, that side of our business is growing much faster than the uh, Amazon retail business. Uh, and you know, I think it demonstrates the value proposition for all of these small and medium sized businesses. Yeah, we got one, one time for one more question. Sure. And, uh, for Rebecca and I, one, you might have one. Um, as Steve Jobs once said, technology, liberal arts, he had the nice uh, you know, street signs kind of intersecting. I think that plays now more than ever. Societal impact has become a huge part of the conversation around tech, tech impact. Uh, you're a policy expert, you've, have, you've been studying it, you live in DC. The policy game seems to be more important now than ever before around tech and the participation of tech companies in policy, not just hiring a policy firm or a right. team to do it, actively engage and be you know, as an ingredient of the company, is there enough people <laughs> that can actually do that, one, and what are some of the key policy opportunities are out there for either young individuals, like my daughter, or other young people coming out of college, because it seems to be the game is, re is shaping an, an into a new direction. Well, it's, the space is fascinating, because these issues uh, really uh, are uh, front and center right now around, uh, you know, you know, questions around technology and how to ensure that as it continues to evolve that it does so in a way that's, uh, you know, allows for innovation but also uh, protects privacy, civil liberties, and the like. So these, you, you can't be in a more exciting space if you're going to be on the, in the private sector uh, engaging in policy. Uh, and even if you're in government, I mean, I think it's, if, you're a, if you're on that side, it's a very interesting space to be in. So, uh, and, and, and oh, look, tech has grown up, uh, you know, the, uh, the internet has grown up, and uh, there's no question that uh, with that, uh, you know, more more attention is being paid, and that's and that's fine and appropriate. More responsibility more and responsibility, accountability. Sure. I just have one more final thing, and this because of your uh, vantage point as someone who was in a famously tech-savvy administration, the Obama administration. And, and then we also see lawmakers questioning Mark Zuckerberg, seemingly not understanding how Facebook makes money. Mm -hmm. where, where do you, how, do lawmakers get it? Or, or, I, think, or, I, think, I think a lot of lawmakers do. I was just with one, Mark Warner from Virginia, U.S. Senator, former, former uh, telecom uh, executive and investor. He, he very much gets it. And they're, uh, you know, the, the caricature is, I think, exaggerated. But look, that's our job. It's our job, it's the press, it's everybody, you know, one thing we do here, you know, with the team we have in D.C. is uh, be a resource of information, like try to explain, try to, uh, you know, here's what's happening, here's how our model works, here's how the technology works. And I think that, that, that can only help uh, as regulators and lawmakers decide how they want to approach these problems. A lot of innovation opportunities, I mean, just the CIA deal alone is set off a gestation period, now growth around mm -hmm. cloud acceleration. Well, I think it demonstrates, you know, A, we're very customer focused, and that, you know, uh, uh, is especially true when it comes to our national security agencies and defense agencies, uh, but also that the security is our first concern at AWS, uh, as well as at broader Amazon, so uh, uh, we're, we're glad to have those Thanks customers. Yep. Yes. Thanks Excellent. a lot. Thanks so much, Jay. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. Please stay tuned for more of theCUBE AWS Public Sector. We will have Teresa Carlson coming up next.